Okay. My name is Mercedes Michalowski. I'm the Executive Director of Oliver Art Center, and you're joining us for 20 questions. And I'm going to go right into question number one. Will you please introduce yourself? Well, thank you for having me here today. Um, I'll introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my work. Um, my name is Katie Lauren. I reside in Northern Michigan and I'm an artist. I am a freelance acrylic painter and my work is all about passion, whether it be people or places or the allure of nature. I work to capture those moments in life that leave us breathless. And in order to accomplish this, I use layers and excuse me, textures of um, eye-catching colors in order to provide my viewers with an emotional experience in a meaningful way. That's wonderful. I think that's one of the best introductions we've had. <laughs> Thank you. So you kind of alluded to this, but what is your favorite medium to work with? I love acrylic paint. It's so, um, the viscosity is so buttery. And there's such vibrant colors and there's so many of them and you can change the viscosity, the thickness of it to the thinness of it and such a versatile um, medium that is just so fun to work with and well, I just have a blast with it. Yeah. So obviously that's a great time. I have a great time. The whole thing. Um, so when did your interest in art begin? Well, my uncle um, was a professor at Michigan State. Um, <clears throat> he taught humanities, so um, I've always been exposed to art. I've always been an art appreciator, but um, I literally could only draw the basic rabbit until um, about three years ago, I had <clears throat> what I called a monumental heartbreak, which was a shatter. And this true story, I was kind of standing in this area and I had a calling and it, it was, um, Katie, go buy a tube of electric blue paint. And I was like, what? I don't know how to paint and I don't even like the color blue very much. <laughs> but the pole was so compelling and I was like, I don't even know where to go. So I went to Michael's and I was like, pulled around the store almost magnetically of what to buy. And I just started putting canvas and paint and charcoal and pencils and all these things in my cart. And so that was October of 2018. And since then I've painted over 150 pieces and done many, many commissions. And I've just been really lucky with this gift that I was given. So really incredible story. That's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Um, so who or what inspires your work or inspires you in your work? Well, I love um, literature and poetry. And there's this um, Chilean poet who's now deceased, but he won the Nobel Prize, um, Pablo Neruda. And he is most known for his love stories, um, poems, and they will make you cry, but they also make you feel alive. And I always think that art is like poetry without words. And he has so much passion in his poems. And I'm really inspired by his poetry, and I almost feel like my art is a reflection of his poetry. And I also, I've <clears throat> taken some of his title, my, I titled my paints sometimes off of the lines in his poems. Like, well, actually this one to my left, um, I pulled it out of one of his lines. It's Skin of the Grapes is the title of this, of her here. So yeah, it's just, really fun and he's just so inspiring and emotional and beautiful breathtaking so yeah. then how did you learn about this poet i don't know it's one of the another thing that i just stumbled upon him and yeah i have his books next to my bed and 
just beautiful and it'll, it's life changing, really. I recommend it. Oh, Captain's Verses is the okay. name of one of them. Recommend it. Hmm. Very cool. We'll have to check that out for sure. Yeah. Um, so, when we were putting together the questions, we didn't want to use the standard questions we ask. You know, you see every artist being asked. So, um, we came up with a few kind of out of the box questions, I guess. So if your artwork were to be classified as a musical genre, what genre would it be? Um, contemporary, upbeat, positive, with um, danceable features, I say, because here I'll share a little embarrassing little tidbit about me that after I'm finished painting, I work a full-time job too, so I paint at night, but. Um, after I finish a painting or I'm finished for the evening, I have a little dance party here by myself. <laughs> so it's gotta have a little dance features going on too. So yeah, fun music always. Yeah. Perfect. You can, you can definitely see that in your work. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there's plenty of artists that have, you know, victory dances when they've completed their work. <laughs> kind of dance parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you were so um, awesome to give us a beautiful backdrop um, of your work, but could you give us a verbal snapshot, you know, kind of talk about what you're standing in front of, of your work? Yeah, so I'll just give you a snapshot of how I work. I actually work in my, I call it my art lab, but it's my kitchen counter and I work flat out on my counter. I don't typically use an easel, although I have an easel next to me. Um, and it's a gentle, unhurried process um, because of the layering of the paint that happens. And I also rinse, or I call it stripping, my work. And it's super messy and I trash the whole kitchen, but it's such a beautiful process because the pieces will reveal different um, faces of themselves. And it takes about, well, minimum of eight hours per piece because it they have to dry and then you know I layer on more paint. But um, yeah, it's a huge mess. But um, I I love the whole process because they really end up being what they're supposed to be at the end of the day or night actually. <laughs> it's not day, forced at all. Depending how late I work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um... So, you know, just in looking at your work behind you, this, this next question might be a tough one for you, but if you could only use shades and tones of one color for the next few years in your work, um, what would that be? Now I thought about this and it probably should be the electric blue, but I love um, the warmth of my work. And of course I love, you know, the sun and the yellows and all of that. And, the yellows that come out of the flowers. And I think yellow is such a spirit lifter. And so I'm gonna have to go with yellow, so. Okay. Um, so uh, what is your favorite tool in your art toolkit? Well, that's a toughie. Um, Cause I work in my kitchen, everything is a tool in the kitchen. Um, I also walk and so like I'll pick up things that are on the side of the road and you know whether it's a dead bolt or whatever, just refuse that's on the side of the road and I'll use that in my work too but if I have to narrow it down well, I'll narrow it down to two um the palette knife because that's always fun and then the fan brush because it's got such a unique it leaves such a unique imprint on the on the work so but yeah, everything's a tool, Any, anything and everything. So then what's your least favorite? Clean up. <laughs> because I make such a mess, yeah, yeah. But there is no least favorite tool. Everything is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's all fair game. Sure, well, that makes sense. <laughs> the, the, you know, the possibilities are limitless at that point. Yeah, it's all part of the creative process. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so what's the best piece of advice you've been given? Oh, I love this one. Um, it's simple, short, it's be brave. 
because it leads you towards amazing experiences. Awesome. You can definitely see that in your work too. Thank you. Um, so do you prefer, um, or have you, I know you're still kind of a bit of an emerging artist, mm -hmm. um, work solo or in collaboration with others? I, well, I had a learning experience about this because about a year ago, I had a new commission and it was a very large piece. It was four feet by four feet. And I was super excited about it because um, it was um, a woman who was engaged to her partner and it was a surprise gift. And she had told me, I interviewed her and she told me, you know, words like, free and alive and love and passion and connection. And so I was to paint the two partners. And, you know, as I, I laid the base, as I call it, and I had some, periodically people would come in here and say, oh, I think you should do this, or I think you should do that. And it kind of blocked me. And I struggled with this piece for about six months. I'd start it and stop it. And I'm like, I'm not feeling the connection or the passion of these two individuals that I was painting. And I finally had to text her and say, I have to take a break because I'm really struggling here. And she's like, don't worry about it. Just take your time. And I was out walking one day and thinking to myself, like, what is going on? Like, I just paint my paint. I just paint my work and it just comes out. And, and I'm like, well, hello, you're not painting your work. Cause I had let all this other voices influence me. So I, oh, hello. So I just, you know, went back and what did I do? I painted my work and knocked it out of the park. And once I delivered it, she texted me crying and she said, oh my gosh, how did you put my words into this painting? And it was just so rewarding, but it was real, it's a real lesson that, you know, you really have to be true to yourself as an artist and listen to yourself. And so definitely solo. I mean, trusting, I love other, I love people in general, but um, yeah. So the answer has to be solo, long story short. Yeah. That makes that makes perfect sense. Um, you know, I'm I'm a member of a few different groups, you know, on Facebook and whatnot of like artists, and I'll post a piece halfway through, and I'll get a lot of input. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it's like one of those things that when it's constructive criticism, and you're like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that, and then you just totally start going back, going, well, should I have thought of that? Would I have really thought of that? And then it's like, is it even my idea anymore? And it just you know, being part of a community can be so wonderful. And then at the same time, it can be, you know, almost detrimental to what you're working on. <laughs> so it can yeah. really, it can really interrupt your whole sense of self and, you know, what you know about yourself as an artist. It was a good lesson. Yeah. And oh, I, would that, I mean, feedback is great, but it can also clog up the you know, I mean, people, she paid me to do my work and, uh -huh. you know, yeah, but I got there just took a while. Yeah. And they're happy customers. Oh yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so which famous artist would make a good president of the United States? So this is a tough one. Cause I was trying to envision a right brained <laughs> creative <laughs> president in, in office, um, but I came up with Jasper Johns, and I'm not sure how many people are familiar with him, but um, he paints things that are American that the mind already knows, like the flag or a map of the United States, and then he also has embedded in it his strategic symbolism. <laughs> So, like, it's kind of covert. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it, it is a tricky question. You know, I've had a variety of answers when I've asked this over and over. And, you know, the vast majority, I think, of people say you, they couldn't come up with anybody because they want to keep art and politics separate or 
um, you, you know, artists don't tend to have that kind of way of thinking, you know, but if you look back at the number of presidents that became artists after they left office, I think that's a very intriguing thing to look at. Um, are there, are there many? There, there's quite a few and, you know, and so it's, you know, I think it's just something to, interesting to think about, you know, um, when asking this question, which is a little bit out of the box, but we're going to move on to our next out of the box question, okay. right. <laughs> which is, uh, what is your favorite meal? Well, I love anything spicy that kicks it up a notch. Um, have you ever tried those fire Cheetos, by the way? No, I haven't, but my daughter <laughs> loves them. <laughs> those are really good, but um, that's not my favorite meal, but I love those fire Cheetos. Um, I love, my favorite is um, they're tilapia fish tacos, but they're spicy and then putting like fresh avocado and jalapenos on the top. That sounds yeah. pretty perfect to me. Pretty good. <laughs> so what type of art or which artist hangs on the walls in your home? Besides your own, of course. Yeah, beside my own. Um, well, I have three children, of course, and they're all launched. They're all adults now, but um, they were all really good artists growing up, which I was envious of because, you know, I could only draw the rabbit. So I have their work. I have um, Richard Shem and Kurt Anderson. And I also have, like I said, collect literature and sculptures and also Aboriginal art. So very eclectic. Yeah, it sounds like it. That's great though. Um, so what advice would you give your younger self? Um, your intuition is your superpower. <laughs> So pay attention to it. I read a book um, by, I don't know, maybe you've heard of it, by Malcolm Gladwell called Blink. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, basically, you know, the answer to something within the first five seconds. And so pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a great bit of advice. So often you second guess and then, you know, it turns out to not be exactly what is good for you. Right. So if you could time travel backward or forward to safely make art, uh, what date or time period would you choose? I would actually, I've been um, visioning anyway about going to Santa Fe and doing a, like a week long residency there and just painting. So it'd be um, forward, obviously near future and I'd love to just go stay in a little well-lit adobe at the base of the mountains and spend a whole week just painting. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah. So I yeah. agree. Definitely forward thinking, forward thinker. Awesome. So when, what, other than your kitchen counter, is there anything you have to have to make art? Uh, the kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> and always music because I'm always cranking up the music and usually there's some wine involved in the process too. It's usually, it's a fun, fun time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so is there a gallery or museum that is kind of like your bucket list, like your dream location to show your art at? And if so, where is that? Well, I think it's an honor to be um, accepted into any gallery, of course. Um, I do have a dream one. And it's in New York City and Soho. It's George Burgess. And the reason it's my dream is because he is really showcased in the Oh, there's a noise over there. Showcasing um, emerging artists on a global level. But more importantly, he's bringing back the client gallery artist equation because it's gotten to be when, one of the things, I guess I'll just say this, one of the things that kind of makes me sad, sort of, not sad, but maybe melancholy is when a gallery sells your piece of art to a client and I don't get to 
see the client or know what moved the client about my piece or like, so the circle doesn't get to close for me. Cause I love that part of the whole equation is knowing the client and, you know, just seeing the feedback and just that relationship part with the people, the human exchange there. So he's doing all that, bringing it back and he's, he's global. He also has a gallery in Berlin and I don't know, it's just kind of exciting concept. Yeah. yeah it sounds like it. Yeah. Um, so this question, most of my, I guess, interviewees struggle with, um, how do you know when a work is finished? Well, I can't say I always have because there's been a couple times when I've overpainted and, um, you know, I had it finished and I'm like, oh, I'll just do this. And then I mess it up and I have to, you know, it comes, becomes something else, but I've learned my lesson and um, I've learned that the, I can't force the painting to do what the painting tells me to do. So. I kind of have let the painting kind of guide now. And I know when I have a, a sense of calmness that comes over me, I also don't force myself on a painting anymore. I let it kind of direct me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a feeling and calm sense. But I know when it's done, it just says, yeah, you're done now. And I let it, let it just be. Yeah, very organic and mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, Katie, tell me where can we find your work? Well, I'm on the social media platforms, of course, like Facebook, and my website is katielaurenart.com. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, I have a exhibition, not mine, but um, I'm going to be showing at Glen Arbor Art Center. Um, I sell note cards at your gallery and at Crooked Tree, and that's it for right now. That's got a lot going on. That sounds like it. Very busy. Yeah. <laughs> and a day job. <laughs> and a full-time job, yeah. It's all yeah. good. I'm fortunate. Awesome. Well, is there anything else, Katie, that you want to bring up that maybe I didn't get a chance to ask you that, you know, take take a few minutes for... A little self-promotion <laughs> we welcome that <laughs> oh gosh i just if anybody had any questions about my work or anything i'd love to continue a conversation with with your audience but i also you know want to say to you on how fortunate you know frankfurt and the surrounding communities are to have the oliver art center it's such a tremendous asset and that you know, your staff is top notch and your volunteer base. And I just think it's just, just, I want to say a big thank you, big warm thank you for all you guys do. It's just incredible. So, well, we want to, we want to thank you because we love always getting new artists. And oh, thank um, you. it was definitely, it was a breath of fresh air when we saw your pieces in one of our first open calls that you, yeah, were, and you guys are so warm and wonderful. And yeah, just made me feel right away like family. So good, good. Really that's yeah. what we try to do. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and doing this with us, Katie. Thank you for your time. Yeah. So nice to meet you too. It's good to meet you. Thank you.